Are post-transplant vaccinations effective? All transplantation guidelines recommend vaccination against most of the most common pathogens in myeloma. But uh, until now, nobody has ever tested serological response to these vaccines. Antibody serology tests look for antibodies and can help determine if a patient has developed immunity from a previous vaccine. Basically, nobody knows whether vaccination is successful after transplantation. So there might be patients who are susceptible to infections, severe infections, who do not respond to vaccination. So in our trial, we investigated vaccine titers before and after transplantation, as well as after vaccination under lenalidomide maintenance therapy. And there were several things that we found out. First of all was that transplantation alone restores the seropositivity against most pathogens. So we saw in 20% of our 139 patients that transplantation basically restored immunity against pathogens. And further on, we saw that vaccination after transplantation is very successful. So 60% of patients after vaccination who were transplanted for newly diagnosed myeloma showed positive titers after vaccination. And 20% of patients did not. So basically, um, our conclusion from that was that we have to check for titers after vaccination because not everybody responds as, as the usual um, community does. So um, that's the first consequence from our, from our result. And lastly, we performed a survival analysis and could basically show that patients who converted from negative to positive titers had a severe benefit concerning progression-free survival and also overall survival. So that's very interesting and we have to go into detail on that because we have to identify which patients are prone for positive seroconversion and, and what's the reason for this survival benefit that, that we observed. And it was pretty astonishing because 70% of patients were in ISS stage 3 in our analysis. And overall survival in these seropositive conversion patients was 100% at 3 years. So these have a really great outcome. We are not sure what's the biological basis of this right now. And we'll integrate also MRD diagnostics and immunoprofiling from peripheral blood and also bone marrow for future analysis to decipher why these patients converted and why the outcome was so excellent. But taken together, we have to say that uh, vaccination is very successful in uh, myeloma patients after transplantation. But 20% of patients do not respond to vaccination, so therefore it's very important to check serum titers against the different pathogens. We have to investigate uh, why the survival benefit was so significant in the patients with positive seroconversion. When should revaccination start after a transplant? Usually, most of the uh, European and Amer American transplantation guidelines say 6 to 12 months after transplantation. And that's the common practice. So usually if you start your um, maintenance therapy, that's about the time when you start your inactivated vaccines. A bit more complicated are the live vaccines. So for example, measles, you should wait two years after transplantation to start these live vaccines because there might be some reasons for side effects due to live vaccines if you go too close to the transplant. What should I know about vaccinations after transplant? Vaccinations after a transplant are a critical part of teaching your new immune system how to protect you. Every institution has their own protocol in terms of a timeline of how those vaccinations are administered in the, after your transplant. Some may be in the first couple of months, and many times those vaccinations will continue several years after your transplant is over as we um, kind of continue on the timeline of vaccinations. Um, some of the most critical vaccinations that we know are influenza or your standard flu shot every year. Um, pneumococcal or pneumonia vaccines are absolutely important. Um, but some of the other vaccinations that will routinely be included as part of the post-transplant vaccination series include things you never would have imagined you'd need again, measles or polio or tetanus, things like that. Hepatitis is a common one we do as well. Obviously, COVID is an important part of this. We follow CDC instructions and recommendations in terms of the frequency of that and try to incorporate it into our um, standard vaccination timelines. Shingles vaccination is another important part of this. I think overall it's important to recognize that even though you may have had many of these vaccinations before your transplant, um, whatever immunity you once had is now gone and we have to start over again. So you're like a brand new baby. We're gonna start do those vaccinations all over again, make sure we can build up your immunity again. In terms of the vaccination of the distant cell transplant, so <clears throat> 
you know, we always warn our patients ahead of the time that after the stem cell transplant, the patients will be like a newborn baby. So we completely wipe out their immune system. So, and that means that we have to revaccinate our patients. So what that means is that have, they have to receive all the baby shots that they have received as they, when they were babies, right? And we use a little bit different schedule for that, given the fact that we just reset the whole immune system. And usually we require for the immune system to mature and be able to build a response uh, against the vaccines that we're giving to the patients because vaccines are bits and pieces of the uh, bacterial viruses, right? And in order for us to administer them, we want to make sure that we create the memory cells again. And since we just reset the whole bone marrow, we need about three to six months for that immune system to mature enough so they they learn and they kind of understand what they're supposed to do. It's like you ask the kindergarten kid to do uh, high intensity high school math and they probably can't, right? So you want them to grow, you want them to mature. And that usually happens in three to six months after the stem cell transplant. And um, there are certain sets of vaccinations we prefer to do first. If we are in a flu season, we certainly would like to give the flu and COVID vaccines right away as soon as we can. Um, and the rest of the baby shots, uh, like DT, IP, uh, diphtheria, pertussis shots, then hemophilus, um, influenza shots, uh, pneumococcus, uh, we try to save the life of vaccines for um, two years after the transplant or even beyond the two years. And we sometimes um, might even shy away if patients are still considered to be more like immunocompromised. For example, the MMR and varicella shots, I would prefer to give it two or two and a half years post stem cell transplant. And sometimes if someone requires a really high intensity, let's say, God forbid, someone progressed during that time, we might even shy away of giving the live vaccines, given the fact that this patient's gonna be immunocompromised.